is a um, for someone that doesn't come from Ohio or Michigan. How does this game become really personal for somebody like you? Um, you know, just I feel like growing up in the Midwest and being around Big Ten football, it's always something that. You know, Thanksgiving weekend, you always tuned into. It was always the game of the week. So just being a part of that as, you know, a youngin, and then, you know, growing up being a fan of both teams and, you know, just always wanted to be a part of this. That's probably the biggest thing I'd say. Okay, just in front of him, play. Real, real quick, how do you be a fan of both teams? <laughs> <laughs> I grew up first being an Ohio State fan, I won't lie. Um, I did, but, you know, God had different plans for me and, you know, showed me the way. and. I'm very blessed and appreciative to be here. That's for damn sure. And then what do you remember about the, the atmosphere and the scene two years ago for this game, and what are you expecting on Saturday from the fans and everything that comes into this game? Um, it's kind of like the meme. It, it was sim cinema. It really was. It was just a movie uh, with the snow falling, with the just crowd. felt like the crowd. It was really one heartbeat that was meshed with the team. And, you know, just uh, everything about it was just magical. And I don't expect anything less this weekend. All the way in the back left corner there, Tony. Yeah, JJ, uh, what's like uh, at Maryland? You were pre-game, you were moving around a little slow. How is, how, how is your health? How are you doing? Doing really good. Yeah, last week was a little bit rough, but, you know, I'm doing fantastic right now. Treatment's been great. And, uh, yeah, we'll be ready to go. And just to build on that, been personally a little slower for you the last mm -hmm. few weeks. Is there anything you can sort of put your finger on first, turn over in a little while? Uh-huh. Um, you know, uh, just getting more into a rhythm, you know, I feel like that's going to be great. Uh, just, you know, uh, with the touchdowns and all that, I feel like I've just been saving them up. So, you know, we're scoring, we're winning, and that's all I care about. Okay, gentlemen on the left there, about halfway up. JJ, uh, Blake did get to play in this game last mm -hmm. year. This was his first go in this rivalry as the feature back. Um, what are people on the other side of this rivalry who have never tackled him? Um, you know, Blake in and of itself is just, you know, a tremendous athlete, tremendous football player. But, you know, adding that extra motivation to this game and, you know, just who he is, it's going to be it's going to be different Blake out there. I'm already knowing it. So, you know, I'm just excited to see and watch him. There's a lot of noise around the program about why this team really won a couple years ago. Where mm -hmm. those people missing? Why, why do you guys, why do you guys win? Um, you know, nobody sees the work we put in. I, I really do believe we work the hardest in the entire country, each and every player, each and every coach. And, you know, it's so easy to look at headlines, so easy to, you know, follow a narrative. But when you're in here and you see what's going on, you, you wouldn't think for a second that it's anything other than hard work, dedication, and execution. Okay, in the front left corner, Isaiah. JJ, how much? Yeah, getting to start against Ohio State, you know, in, in Columbus last year, how, how much does it help to have that type of experience to kind of lean on? You know, two different mm -hmm. teams, right? But yeah. Like, how much can you lean on having played in the game before when you go into a game like this? Huge. I think experience is one of the, you know, greatest edges you can have as a player. And just going into last year, that first drive, just all those emotions that were creeping in, it was something I've never felt before. So now it's predictable, therefore manageable. And I'll know how to you know, handle my emotions and get them down to where they need to be. And yeah, I just say it does a lot for me, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, we'll go to your right side in the front here, Larry. With uh, the potential pressure of this game and your coach is suspended, another one got fired, how much does your meditation help when mm -hmm. There's extra chaos going on around your life. Tremendously. Um, just keeping things simple, keeping things focused on the present moment and what I can control. And, you know, I just feel like taking it day by day and making sure that I keep up with the discipline of my meditation and just, uh, you know, it's a great centering piece for me, a centering activity for me. And, you know, it's done light, light years for me. And, you know, just uh, a lot of guys around the program do it too. And it does a lot for them as well. Okay, stay, same side here, the gentleman all the way to the right. You guys had multiple chunk plays last year in this game. What have you seen from Ohio State defense in that area as they've tried to improve? Uh, they definitely keep a lot more in front of them. They try to make you earn it each and every drive. And uh, I love that because that's what our defense does too. So we've seen it all year and uh, went against it all year. So, But they're a great defense, athletes all over the board. And it's going to be a fun one.
right in front here, Dennis. JJ, it could just be one of these things when Sharon's been the head coach, your numbers have not been way up here and mm -hmm. more uh, up down here. How much do you rely on um, Jim Harbaugh? He is that coach. And is there anything that you uh, can do this week without having him there that you've learned over these three weeks? <coughs> Um, you know, I think each and every game is unique and different, and I feel like these, you know, past couple of games where Coach Harbaugh hasn't been there have been extremely unique. So just uh, getting on the same page with Coach Moore, making sure that there's no uh, confusion throughout the week with the game plan and what he expects of me, and just, you know, going out there and doing the best I can every single play, no matter what's called, and just doing my job at the end of the day. Okay, we've got time for a few more. We'll go back to the left side in the corner, Ryan. How would you describe your history with Kyle McCord? Obviously, both highly ranked quarterbacks mm -hmm. in the 2021 class. Both committed to your schools pretty early. And yeah. how did this swear off for the first time? Uh, Kyle was my guy, you know, ever since growing up and going to all these satellite camps and all these rivals, 247 and all that, we were always there together. And we just kind of meshed, you know, had two alike personalities. And just uh, it, it's going to be really cool. It's going to be really surreal to see him out there in this environment, uh, this game, and just going out there and wish him, you know, safety and make sure he stays healthy. But he, he's going to give our defense a little bit of a, you know, uh, some trouble at times, and we got to respond and be able to, you know, attack him in any way possible. And how much have you interacted with him during during the season? Uh, I haven't really interacted with him much. Um, don't really interact with any other quarterbacks during the season. But uh, yeah, I might shoot him a text this week and just see how he's doing. Check in. Okay, same side towards the front, Austin. JJ, your running ability is obviously a big part of the game. We haven't seen that as much the last couple of weeks. What are your expectations in terms of what you'll be able to do? Um, you know, who knows what Coach Moore wants and expects out of me, but I would just predict that, you know, we're going to do anything and everything to win this football game, whether it's me running the ball or just throwing the ball. So I feel like things will arise just from scrambling and taking off, but, you know, no matter what he asks of me, I'm just going to go out there and execute. Okay, Tom on the left. I didn't hear the question that was asked over there, so this is the same one I followed. But, no worries. Um, you guys have been without Jim now five games. Has that prepared you guys enough for this game? Because this one is so different, are there still adjustments that you guys need to make? I would say so. Just like the whole um, process and throughout the day of just not having him there, it's just it was different at first. And just now with that experience and knowing how it works and how the coaches react to certain things and how they go about coaching the game, it's going to be, you know, Tremendous for us this Saturday because it's one of the bigger games. Yeah. In the back on the left, Michael. JJ, coming into the season with some new pieces on the offensive line, there were some games earlier in the year where the coaches were mixing and matching, trying to find the best five. And then against Maryland, there were some more changing pieces. I guess, how do you feel about the cohesion of this offensive line going into this game and then you know, potentially what comes next beyond? Uh, cohesive is all get out. You know, those guys are always on the same page. You know, they love each other. They, uh, you know, do whatever they can to just be, you know, one tight unit and uh, go out there every single play to, you know, dominate the man in front of them, protect me, protect the backs. And, uh, you know, don't doesn't matter who's in there. They're always just one cohesive unit that plays really well. Okay, we'll go with five more for JJ so we have time to get through to Mikey Sainer still. In the back on the left, Brad Galley. Uh, the magnitude of this game, Desmond Howard will be there. Charles Woodson will be there. Among, I'm sure talking about the Michigan one back. Talk about your relationship with Tom Brady. What kind of texts, calls come through from some of those guys leading up to this game, whether it's advice or mm -hmm. please did you hope we go have state? Like, are those coming through a lot already? No, they're not, because they know exactly what our mindset is. They know uh what this game means to us, just like it was the same way for them. And, uh, you know, they just know that this is a team that's focused on getting better every single day and doing all the right things. So they uh the text might come, you know the night before the game where it's just a little pump up or something like that, get our minds right. But, you know, they know exactly what we're about and they trust us, that's for sure. Sorry, I just want to be sure. Andrew, did you say you're good? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. that's what I want to make sure. Go ahead. Um, with the Michigan versus everybody thing, mm -hmm. uh, how much of that is seeking a little extra motivation versus actually feeling that? Um, I would say it really does feel like that. It really does. You know, I feel like it's a blessing in disguise because it's brought us closer as a unit, brought us closer as an organization, as an entire Michigan family. You know, just all the Michigan faithful reaching out and showing their support. It just means everything to us, and we are so greatly appreciative of it. And, you know, it means a lot 
that, you know, we have all the Michigan alumni I have in our back, and it just gives us more motivation to get out here every single day and do our best for those guys, but most importantly for ourselves. Okay, we'll finish with three on the right side here, about halfway back. Zach? Uh, individually, how much does your game experience change without Jim on the sidelines? I mean, are you making sure that you're talking to the right people, seeing the adjustments you mm -hmm. need to make and keeping your head, I guess? I'd say it stays the same, honestly. Yeah, there's not too many... Uh, Differences other than Coach Harbaugh giving me a little piece of advice here and there. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty normal. Rainer? Yeah, knowing how to win over Ohio State two years ago changed the narrative around this program. Mm -hmm. How much do you subscribe to the idea that the future of the program is at stake based on the results? Uh, um, yeah, I would say every single year uh, it's always like that. This game is one of the defining moments for a season, you know, Big Ten East title on the line. And, uh, you know, it defies the future of the program. So we're just going to try our best to keep it simple, focus on day-to-day -day, uh, wins, and, you know, do our best within each snap when the game comes. Is it hard not to get caught up in that, just knowing that there is so much on the line? Um, no, I wouldn't say so, just because we're so ingrained to just, you know, stay in the present moment and really focus on the task at hand and the day at hand. So, you know, that just goes to credit, you know, Coach Harbaugh and Coach Herb and just the rest of the staff keeping us, you know, in this uh, mindset of just, you know, focusing on the daily victories. It's almost habitual now. Okay, final question for Mr. McCarthy, Bob. JG, you mentioned the, head <laughs> the headlines and the narratives. Uh, what bothers you the most about what you hear? Um, it's just like, you know, knowing how much blood, sweat, and tears we put into this season and all the hours that we put in, just being, you know, deluded by, you know, a scandal and all that. It's, it's unfortunate, but it's out of our control. And we only focus on what we can control and try to get better every single day and not worry about that stuff. But it's just unfortunate that, you know, people don't think we put in the work to get to where we are. Thank you all for your time. We appreciate it. We're going to get JJ moving so we have time for Mr. Sanders. Appreciate still. you guys.